Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a ton of huge stories for you, starting with Nvidia's new flagship release date, Intel's non-K models get their first review, Ryzen 7000 gets RDNA 2, the AMD GPUs that could save us, and the first ever 6 nanometer GPUs. But before I get to those, early next month is CES, and it's actually set to be a really big one. I'm talking a ton of huge announcements. So if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you stay up to date on all things CES. Okay. It's news time, and first up for today, we actually have a leaked document from MSI. You can see right here that MSI is preparing to update its Supram X lineup of graphics cards with the MSI GeForce 3090 Ti Supram X. And you can see right here, this is the document. It was actually originally leaked by video cards. And we have the 3090 Ti 24 gigabyte GPU and the NDA embargo lift date is set for January 27, 6 a.m. Pacific time. Now, what's interesting about this is that actually a little while back, video cards also shared the embargo for the on-shelf day, which is January 27, 6 a.m. Pacific time. Basically, it's about as confirmed as it can be without an actual announcement from the company that the 3090 Ti is set for release January 27. And next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that Intel is set to launch their non-K series of CPUs and actually their B660 motherboards at CES. Once again, make sure you're subscribed. Well, as you can see right here, we actually have one of the first reviews, and this one is of the 12400, but we also have a couple of Intel's upcoming i3s. Either way, this was done by Enthusiastic Citizen. And really quickly before I get to that, if you've been following the channel, you know that we actually saw some leaked pricing for Intel's upcoming non-K models at Best Buy. Specifically, the 12,400, let me check down here, was set to come in at $209.99. Then, of course, the 12,400F is $179.99, the F model not coming with an iGPU, which, if you ask me, is actually more comparable to AMD's parts just because those don't come with an iGPU either. Though, that is set to change fairly soon, but I'll get to that in a minute. Either way, he shared it here. So this is set to be the 12,400. And as you can see with Cinebench R20, it does end up beating the 5600X with Precision Boost Overdrive in both single and multi-core performance. And it does it again here, though of course not by a large margin. Moving on, we can see with 3D Mark's Time Spy, it beats it again. Then when we move over to CPU-Z, we do see that the 5600X squeezes out a win over the 12400, though the single core performance is better with the 12400. It's just the multi-core performance where the 5600X wins. But of course, that really isn't that important. We like to see actual real world tests, not just synthetic tests. And for that, we have quite a few. First, we have CSGO. And here you can see that the 5600X definitely beat the 12400. Next, the Block A2, you can see that the 12400 eases out a win to the 5600X. Then we have uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The 12400 once again wins. 12,400 wins here as well in Watchdog, but then the 5600X comes back. Ultimately, that's basically a tie. The 5600X wins three times and then the 12,400 wins three times. But remember that this is quite a bit cheaper than AMD's 5600X. Even if we're looking at the 12,400 at $210, but even better, the 12,400F, significantly cheaper at $179.99. And the performance is likely very similar, potentially even slightly better for the 12,400F. Though, of course, I would suggest waiting for reviews for that, but either way, not bad at all. Yes, trading blows, but significantly cheaper. And moving on, we then have the Core i3 12100 and 12300. These are four core CPUs. You can see them right here in CPU Z. And when we go down, the only Zen 3 CPU that they can compare it to with four cores is the 5350G. And as you can see, 
The 12,000, both the 12,100 and 12,300 beat it out quite a bit. 12,300 here, 12,100. So 3D Mark, it wins as well. 8 to 64, they are flat, crushing it compared to the 5350G. You can see that they win here. I do believe they win in pretty much everything. So if you're looking for more of a low end CPU, Intel's i3s are very impressive. And next up for today, we have AMD's upcoming Zen 4. For those who don't know, Zen 4 is set to be the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs, with the Ryzen 6000 set to be AMD's 3D vCache. And remember that Zen 4 is set to bring us to the AM5 platform instead of AM4, so a new socket, and it's also built on TSMC's 5 nanometer process. Either way, there's a couple really interesting things that recently leaked. For one, you can see this is actually once again from Enthusiastic Citizen, though really quickly, this right here, they claim that Zen 4 is set to be announced at Computex, which I will honestly say isn't a big surprise. That pretty much makes perfect sense. And you can see here that Enthusiastic Citizen said most likely. I'm not 100% sure if this is just in reference to that or saying, hey, I'm confirming it's Zen 4 and Computex as well. I don't believe so. I think it's just in reference to this one. Regardless, that's not a big surprise. One thing that is extremely interesting is the fact that they mention Raphael, which is Zen 4 desktop models, is actually set to come with RDNA 2. Now, he specifically states that it only gets one or two CUs, specifically just for very basic tasks, but basically so you can have the CPU without a discrete GPU. And of course, I think that's really important with where GPU prices are right now. It certainly made sense when AMD originally announced the first gen Ryzen. Pretty much everyone who was going to be buying it was likely going to have a discrete GPU, though of course they did announce Ryzen 3, so you would sort of think that they would have had an iGPU with that. But regardless, for the most part, AMD has always separated their CPUs from their APUs. I mean, that's effectively what makes an APU an APU. It's a full system on a chip, unlike their CPUs, which is just a CPU. Of course, Intel's been doing integrated GPUs for a really long time, but regardless, this is AMD doing it in the future. Now, really quickly, while he does say only one or two CUs, now, really quickly, while he does only say one or two CUs, as he mentions, it is RDNA 2, so it will likely be very similar to Intel. It said there should not be much difference between AMD and Intel. Either way, I really think that's a huge report. Of course, we have seen that a little while back in the past with a leaked road map, but this very much helps to confirm that. Now, while this one only has one or two CUs, the next story will definitely have more. This comes from WCCF Tech, and it comes from some of their sources, where they actually go over the Ryzen 9 6900HX. And as you would expect, let me see, it is an 8-core 16-thread CPU, just like the past. Remember that these are going to be Zen 3+, Plus, so they're set to be based on 6 nanometers. With that said, the really, really interesting story here, at least if you ask me, is when it comes to the GPUs. You can see that finally, as we've discussed this before, AMD is moving away from Vega with their 6000 series of APUs and specifically they're going straight to RDNA 2. What's interesting about this is the fact you can see starting with Rembrandt, AMD will use Radeon 6 blank blank M branding. What that means is that their GPUs are actually set to be so much better than their previous high GPUs that they're actually gonna be branding it separately. You can see the particular iGPU variant for the Ryzen 9 6900HX will be called the Radeon 680M. Basically, AMD's upcoming iGPUs could be seriously impressive and could be a huge godsend for those who have been trying to find a GPU. Of course, these are currently set for mobile, but as usual, we should expect desktop APUs before long. Ultimately, I sort of view this as a really big step to counteract the major issues that have been going on with the market with the discrete GPUs. It could actually be an entry point for some people without spending absurd amounts of money to be able to play AAA games at a fairly decent frame rate. 
Of course, we don't know exactly how many CUs that it has. You can see down here the compute units is TBC, but from what we've heard, the silicon allows for up to, I believe it was 12. So that is definitely a big jump, especially when we're talking eight only Vega cores. So this would be RDNA 2 and potentially up to 12. This could be a massive boost in performance. And lastly for today, it looks like we are set to get the first ever six nanometer GPUs. Specifically, these are Navi 24 GPUs. And as you can see, it comes from video cards and they actually shared a couple images or renders of the GPUs. And you can see that this was originally disclosed to them by their source, Disclose Susan, Disclose Susan, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Either way, both cards will use a six nanometer process technology and at least the 6500 XT is set to launch on January 19th, almost guaranteed to be announced at CES. One interesting yet fairly depressing note is that the RX 6400 is not going to be introduced by AIB partners, but will be exclusively for OEMs, meaning system builders rather than the DIY market. But from what it sounds, the 6500 XT is set to come potentially to the DIY market. So that definitely is good. When it comes to specs, we can check down here. The 6500 XT is set to come with 1,024 cores, 16 megabytes of infinity cache, 16 ray accelerators, and really quickly I'll point out the 6400 comes with 12, which tells us that these should support ray tracing. And depending on price, I think that's really important and really interesting because it should be right around the level of say a GTX 1660, 1660 Super, something like that, and yet should still have ray tracing. Though of course Nvidia is expected to release a new GPU fairly soon on the lower end with ray tracing as well, but still this is definitely interesting. Unfortunately, it does look like it only comes with four gigabytes of GDDR6, which really just isn't that much. I wish it at least had six. Either way, that's four gigabytes GDDR6, 64-bit memory bus with a full bandwidth of 128 gigabytes per second and 107 watt TBP, 53 watts. Now, the 6400 is expected in March 2022, though once again, the 6500 XT is expected next month. So while that does it for today, let me know what you think about these new GPUs, or do you think iGPUs are set to be sort of a counter to the absurd pricing that we've seen with the street cards? Let me know down in the comments below. And I do apologize for my super raspy voice. I had been a little sick, not COVID, thank goodness, but I have been a little sick over the last couple days. Either way, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.